Brazil about the Toronto real estate market, part two for November 2019. Today you're going to learn the truth about the Toronto real estate market. Get ready for shock. It may be very inconvenient to you. You may love it. You may hate it. You may love me. You may hate it. Me. It doesn't matter. The numbers speak for themselves. You're going to be floored from what I'm going to show you right now. Okay, this is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Agent Mortgage Broker, and today I'm going to talk to you about the, what no one tells you about Toronto's real estate market, part two. Part one was a very successful video I made um, a while ago uh, in 2019, and basically I told you all kinds of stuff. There's another video here, and, and I'll link it for you, and this video here, Toronto Realtor, this is from August 27, 2018, predicts 15% market increase in 2019. Let's see if I was right. Um, let's see if I was right, and let's see if I can find a video to show you where part one is, because it was a quite a popular channel, quite a popular um, video. Thank you very much for everyone, everyone for subscribing, liking, following, calling me, buying condos from me. I am a Toronto real estate agent. I help people buy, sell, and invest in condos and homes and land in Toronto and around it, okay? Uh, what no one tells you, what no one tells you, where's that video, what no one tells you? No one tells you this, 1,000 views. No one tells you this four months ago, and today you're gonna see part two. So, this is Yossi Kaplan, I'm a Toronto real estate agent mortgage worker with Search Realty and Search Mortgage in Toronto, Mississauga, and the expanded GTA. Twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan, you find all the updates. I just put just before here it directly into the Treb uh, market report for October. I'm going to show you. You're going to be floored when you see this, okay? That's Yossi Kaplan, uh, YouTube.com slash Yossi Kaplan, the video channel. By the way, there's a reminder here. Uh, I said myself a reminder um, to watch my own video. It's called Why You Should, Inve um, should you Invest in Uptown, Midtown, or Downtown Toronto. That is coming today, November 5th, uh, in the afternoon. Like my own video. There you go. Okay, UrbanRealtyToronto.com, uh, Nordic Condo, very successful, uh, amazing. It's just going so quickly. Is it still a good time to buy a condo in Toronto? You should really watch these things, how to buy pre-construction. This is Urban Realty Toronto is where I post my blog, where I post listings, how to buy stuff, opportunities, deals. There's tons and tons of stuff here, okay? There's tons and tons of stuff. Uh, York Real Luxury Real Estate is the website where I show you stuff over a million dollars because that's no big deal these days. There's a lot of stuff, that's that 15%. We'll get that in a second. Toronto Condos for Sale is where you're gonna find all the pre-construction condos. So if you're looking for anything, just hit this tab right at the top. There's Theo Condos, there's 36 Birch, all that stuff, okay? All these condos are available here, okay? YossiKaplan.com is where I post even more assignments, deals, uh, reviews, and deep market analysis. Okay, for example, which is better investment or pre construction? The Niagara rental cash flow, that's an amazing one. Uh, how to invest on Queen West? All these investing things come here. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to go to condos.ca, which has become the de facto like research tool for Toronto. It's no longer the MLS. And when you go here, you got to be logged in to see all this stuff. Uh, it's free. It gotta gives you here an average of all Toronto. This is what condos.ca has of seven hundred forty-three dollar a foot, and it says it's two point three nine increase year over year in value. So that that's not a lot, right? It is not a lot, um, but don't forget that is average of Toronto, all of the Toronto. Now, I'm not sure what they consider here at Toronto. There's no map, but I would assume it's the four one six, four one six, and basically all the Treb districts, uh, and they can even tell you here that the average sold price is 636,000 for 856 square feet. These are condos. The rent is 2440 for 710 square feet. So the average rent is 24 and the average uh, size is 710. So if you have a 700 square feet unit, you can expect between 24 and $2,500 a month. And the transactions, uh, that is, I think the last two, did I see somewhere the last 15 days? Uh, 244 sold, 304 rented. I'm not sure what, what time period it is. I thought I saw summer uh, two weeks. Now, when you click this uh, full market report, this way it becomes interesting. So look here. Um, here, it shows you the number of sales, and here it shows you the average price per square foot. Now, these, these are resale. These are resale only, okay? So if you go to the pre-construction, these things sell for almost, some of them double what you see in this list. For example, Nordic sells for around a thousand a foot, even eleven. Okay, um, you know these are unique buildings. They're going to skew one, two, three. Portland 
is 13 to 1500 foot, okay? Four is still 13 to 1500 foot. And when you look at the average, is a half of 1500. That means that the resale in Toronto, the average resale in Toronto, sells for about half of what the fancy, high sought after condos sell in Toronto, about half. So now that is a huge, huge discrepancy, okay? Even at $1,000 a foot, that is a huge discrepancy. That is a discrepancy of 25 to 50% difference between the average Toronto resale and what these new condos are now asking and getting for. So that is, that is dangerous territory. Why? Because if you buy a new condo at $1,500 foot and the average around you is $743, you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. Who's going to buy it off you, okay? Well, remember this is average, and Toronto is a really huge place, so it doesn't mean, you know, this could be Etobicoke, this could be Scarborough, this could be anywhere, so it's average. So let's look at a few trends here, and I'll show you more what I mean. So this is the uh, TREB report. By the way, if you want to find it, uh, TREB, just go on Google and type TREB Market Watch, okay? And then you'll just get the link. And then go here and click on see full report and the PDF will load right to your screen in your browser. You can download it too. So look what's happening here. We're going to start here. <laughs> and the first thing is this is from right to left. I don't know why they do it this way, okay? But in October uh, 2018, there were 7,448 sales on the MLS. These are resale. These do not include assignments and do not include new construction, which are much, much higher in price, okay? And also, we can imagine that um, the amount of uh, new construction selling in the city is probably around 1,000 to 2,000 a month, okay? So you can easily add another 1,000 to 2,000 to these numbers to get the real numbers plus the assignments, probably a few hundreds, okay? October 2019, we had, we had 1,000 more sales, 1,000 more sales. Look at this, okay? 7484, actually 1,051 more sales. So that is a significant, significant amount. This is in, in one month, the, the, the TREB system recorded 1,000 more sales between October 2019, much higher than October 2018. Let's look at the graph here. This is uh, this is October 2019. We're getting an average of 753, number of sales 1343. So obviously, the condos.ca does not take into account all the numbers that all the numbers that we see in the report here. But you know, it's it's uh, if we look at uh, here 724 and 1651, you can see it is lower. 1651 here, that's what condos.ca measured in October. They got 1343 with 753. So the amount of transaction here is actually lower, but the price is higher. Okay? And when prices go up, usually you find lower number of transactions because as the price gets up, a lot more people are getting pushed down, pushed out, or cannot buy, or have to sit on their hands and wait. Sometimes for life, sometimes they can't. So that, that is a big problem. Um, the prices, look at the prices. In October 2018, the average price of the condo in Toronto, according to TREB, was 807538 807. According to condos.ca, it was it was 7.24 a foot, and what would be the average unit? 8.56. Right. So if I do the calculator. Let's see if this would work. I got. Uh, Seven twenty-four. Times average of uh, eight five six. I'm, I'm not sure if these are six nineteen. That's the price I'm getting. The average they're getting six thirty-six. Uh, it, it's pretty close, um, <clears throat> but here the price is actually much much higher when Trev's measuring. So you can see the discrepancy between two sites. <laughs> it's a bit of a problem to get a good picture with it. The difference is so high. Nonetheless. They both show us that the number of, of numbers transaction here is significantly higher, and the price is also significantly, significantly higher here, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, if you look at 852, and that is a crazy thing, and you look at the, um, that's the short report, the average price, uh, the TREB, I'm going to stick to TREB for a second, in 2018 was 787, and in 2017, which is the highest year on record you can see here, 
、uh, was 822. So we have surpassed 2017 by leaps and bounds, and we actually $30,000 more. It's about three, four percent more、um, than October than than than、uh, 2017. So we we are way way passing. We're gonna come here. Now I was not expecting this. I was actually expecting this year to stay around the 800 mark. I was not expecting this year to go to the 850. So that prediction of the 15 percent, wherever it was, that prediction of 15 percent that I made、uh, last year is looking pretty good. Okay, May 2019, 18 percent. No one tells you this. No one tells you these things, my friends. Yossi will tell you because I want to tell you the way it is. At the end of the day, what I do is I sell real estate. Um, I help people buy it. I help people sell it. I help people invest. And my thing is, I want people to get the best information possible so they can make the best investment possible. Okay. So for that, you need to be aware of the numbers, and I try to help you understand them. Now, when you look at sales and average price by major home type, October 2019 here, you can see number of sales. So the number of sales here,、uh, the average price in the 416 was 1.3 million, and then. 905 is 952, and the semis are a million one, and the townhouse is 800,000, and the condo is 662, 663, more or less what we saw on the condos. That、uh, CA, that's a very close number actually. Okay, the amount of、uh, sales we've made in the 416, 1500 for the condos, lots of homes selling again. Okay, lots of homes selling again, and you can see where we had townhomes selling、uh, previously as number one category item. We are actually seeing the homes are back on the market, and so are the townhouses. And I've told you many times, townhouses are hot, hot, hot. They are very hot. Everyone's want to buy the townhouses, okay? The semis、uh, down a bit. The detached picked up, I think, because they went down a bit. So people go back to the detached, and because the condos just moving in, moving in well.、Uh, the average there on the market show you the health of the market is 23, so one day less. It's fine. It means that the properties are priced properly, so they sell quickly. Now, remember, if a property was、um, put on the market at a high price and then relisted, that's not going to show. So those stats are a little skewed positively. The average price of、uh, the condo here is eight five two, eight five two, and it was, and those are the same numbers that up here you can see. So it is up by five and a half percent, and that's for the that's for the resale. Now I said fifteen percent, and I meant it because the Price of the new construction has shot from a thousand dollars a foot, not to eleven fifty, which will make fifteen percent, but actually to fourteen hundred a foot, fifteen hundred a foot, which is forty and fifty percent increase. That is insane. No one's telling you this, okay? That is crazy. And I made a bunch of videos recently where you should buy, and also I made videos looking at the math and the politics and everything has to do with fourteen hundred dollar a foot condos. So it starts with.、Um, Show you here. So, where's the fourteen hundred dollar video? So there's one video here. Should you pay fourteen hundred dollar foot for a Toronto condo? And explains、uh, what's going on there. Then I made another video called the Window Opportunity Closing, which explaining what happens when the prices price rises. Then I give you a video about Nordic condos because that's be way below. You know, you can still find units there at a thousand a foot, even nine something for the three bedrooms. And then I show you how to break even. And I'll show you, and then one or two, three bedrooms that will show you also a break-even calculation of how that works per room. And this video today, there's going to be released this afternoon. You will see、um, the numbers behind a thousand dollar a foot, thirteen fifty a foot, and fifteen hundred a foot, sixteen hundred a foot. So these these four or five videos will really show you、um, how to look at the market. Okay, so watch them sequentially.、Um, nonetheless. 8,500 sales in 2019 for October, which is phenomenal. That's a thousand. That's 33 sales more every day. More, okay, more.、Uh, new listing about the same, slightly less, which is not bad since the price going up. You know, maybe people are holding back on selling.、Um, active listings are less, which is actually a good sign because if there were a lot of active listings, means a lot of people trying to sell because they think the price is going to drop. But if people think the price is going to go up, then less of them sell. They go, you know what? That's okay. I wait for next year. And I had one of those、uh, last month where we put something on the market, and then the owner decided, you know what? I'm just going to wait a year and see what I get. I think I'll do a lot better. And that's totally fine. Having said that, if you're expecting prices to rise, 
you should probably be gearing to buy because if you are expecting prices to rise why would you not set up your numbers now so let's look at a few more things that I'll explain to you okay so you can see the graph here uh, WP in the 80s was with when we had a very high inflation in Canada so when high inflation means the value of money deteriorates so all the prices go up then it came down to what was called recession of the 90s and then it steadily came up until 2014 or 15 came and then it exploded in 2016 and 17 18 and 19 will just break all records okay 19 is going to break all records it's the same one 19 is going to break all records and when you look here you can see the green line it's been the highest here at june 2019 and once summer dwindles, okay, you can see that the volume, the grace, the volume of the sales, it's going down because it will always go down after the peak. You can see this year here and this year here and this year here and this year here. You can see it five times. It's five blocks of these of these graphs, and they're all very similar. And in 2017, we had the highest volume. People going like crazy. So look at the price jump here, okay? When you have high, high volume, we usually show crazy price jump or if you have a very high volume you'll have a crazy price drop people thinking the price come down but no there is no price drop here the price drops that we realize are December 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 January back to school here and back up so probably we'll see a bit of a price drop in December so you can see the lowest volume of the year is December, January, February, December, January, December, January, December, January, and February picks up, and usually around April, May, or in very busy years, like even in March, the volume starts to come up and up and up, okay? So that's what you're looking at, my friends. What you're looking at here is you look at the market that is just keeps going up. Now, when you had some of these uh, measures and try to block some foreign money, of course, it doesn't really work because if you are a foreigner and you want to invest in Canada, all you have to find is cousin in Canada, you can send them the money, they buy under their name as a Canadian and you, you know, and you do whatever deal you do with them, um, but to the Canadian government and the Canadian people, all we see is a local buying it. Now that's not illegal, that is legal, you know, like someone can send, you live in Canada, someone can send you money from other country and you can buy with it under your name. Now, I'm not sure what's the regulations and the taxes about receiving money from, from overseas. You know, you got to ask accountants for that. Um, but the fact is that, you know, those measures are, uh, they don't help very much. And what we see here is if, if the peak price, the condos that's here reports is 777, that's average. Okay, and don't forget, we're already selling 1,500, 1,600, double that and more per foot for the new condos. What does that tell you? That tell you there'll be expectation in the market that all these units will have to sell for more to justify what those investors were investing in. I mean, no investor is going to pay $1,500 a foot unless they think that they can, they can do some with the money. Unless, of course, they got to get the, the money out of their country because they think that if I keep the money in my home country, then who cares? It's, it's just going to, it can go to zero because my country will collapse or there'll be like some international problems with my country so i might as well get the country uh, the money out of my home country i bring it to a safe haven like canada or maybe other countries i'm sure this is not only in canada i'm sure this happens in other countries too i just don't follow other countries i only follow here and uh in that kind of detail um but you can see we're only 20 buck a foot now from from the peak okay so we have been peaking all, all, all through 2019 and really uh, 2018, here you can see September, we made it to 744. And even our worst month here, uh, September 737, in just a few bucks, it basically we're, we have, the lowest we have gone is the peak of last year and we're pushing it farther and farther up. So there is, you know, and if you look at that, uh, what Treb told you about the 5.5% uh, here, this number here, the average price, that is average. Okay, that 5.5% 5, 5 .5 is average. But the fact that the active listings are, down, uh, are less by almost 20% and list new listings are down by almost 10%, that means that 
you know, there's a big pressure on prices to come up because there's not enough supply. So in order to increase supply, we need to build more. Now we had elections, all these crazy promises. We will build 500,000 homes. We will build 100,000. We will build 5 million, whatever. It's ridiculous. I mean, we can barely build with what we have now in the industry, you know, 15,000, maybe 20,000 units. And those are tiny units in huge buildings. So in order to build 500,000 homes, you know, we need 20 years to do it. We, and even so, we don't have even the cranes. We don't have the manpower. I don't know. We gotta import all these buildings. We're gonna we're gonna bring the concrete into the country. We're gonna bring the kitchens and the taps. And everything that has to do with the building. One building is huge, huge amount of effort to make. So to jump from twenty thousand or fifteen thousand units a year built in a, in a GTA, which is the economic power of the entire country, um, into five hundred thousand, even spread along the country, who's gonna pay for it and who's gonna work that and how are we going to get all this? You know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, what makes sense to me is that we have a real housing crisis here. And as investors, you know, you got to claim your, your stake now because it's just not going to, it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. Now, the price of resale, and this is I like, you got to understand, it's churning up slowly, but it is coming up. And if you look, you know, just a few years ago, okay, let's look here. Like just a few years ago, when the whole starts starting, like around here. 2015, look at these volumes, crazy volumes in 2015, very, very high, okay? But the price was still reasonable, under 500 bucks a foot. But once we, we crossed the 500 bucks a foot, it just went up like crazy. So how long did it take from $500 a foot? Where is it? Right here. So it's like beginning of 2016, and now with three and, say, three and, a, half, uh, three and a half years past, we're... $250 to $280, so over 50% increase in three and a half years. Over th that is very, very a lot. <laughs> How do you say this? So watch this. I don't know if you can see the calculator in the screen capture, but if I have, say, 250, um, uh, three and a half years, okay? So 3.5 times uh, 12, that's 42 months, okay? And if I have a 50% increase, in, in uh, 42 months, that means that every every month I'm increasing by 1.2, 1.2. That's a simple. That's not uh, it may not be pure math, but it, it's increasing and increasing and increasing. You think that's only one percent? Yeah, but it's cumulative. It's cumulative. So we're increasing by 50 percent over three and a half years. 50 divided by three and a half. We're increasing by 20 percent a year here in the last three years on average. Okay. So you can see why people would buy new condos of 1,400 foot and 1,500 foot, even though it's double than what a resale condo costs, even if it's you know 40, 50 percent more than what you can get for a thousand dollars a foot. And that 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 is that is a huge discrepancy. That's going to be a problem. Now look at the active for sale market report. And these are active for sale, 2,500 available for sale, and that's what they're asking. It doesn't mean they're going to get it. And don't forget, if they're not going to get it, it's going to go back in the market. And it's going to go back here in these numbers as what sold. So if any of these units did not sell, if any of these units here did not sell, it's not going to go into the stats. So that means that the stats show you a lower number than the asking. The stats only show the closed number. The asking will always be a little higher than what's actually received because, you know, a lot of units don't get what they ask. Most of them do, but... The average of, of uh, what they get to asking is, is usually a few points less, okay? And if, it's, if they sold for asking, then they either priced it right, the market was ready for it, or it was relisted after it was listed for too long, okay? Uh, so the one bedroom is now you're looking at almost $1,000 of food. That's average, so that makes sense to me. Uh, the two bedroom, 924 a foot. The, uh, the one plus den, the two bed, 823. And this one doesn't say bedrooms, average asking. I guess that's their average, 830, okay, for the, these type of units. Now, this is the active for sale asking 830. So they're asking for 830 average a foot. Um, so it's putting, they're asking a lot more than the average. So the units on the market now are asking a lot of higher price than what they've been selling so far. So this number, 2.39%, will probably be much, much higher. Okay, no one's telling you this. Now look at the rentals. Why it's important to look at rentals? Because we need to buy a unit that can break even. And if you want to know if your unit can break even, go to this video here. 
and say how to tell if your unit breaks even and it's basically a video where I explain how I take an example of Nordic condos because that's in the news these days and uh, at least in the real estate news and then I basically show you the prices and the breakdown and how to calculate um, those break even points okay I just shows you like but step by step it's very easy so follow here okay so back to here okay so I'm back at uh, condos.ca on the first page just log in it's free and look here so the rentals uh, the one bedroom is getting four buck a foot twenty three hundred dollars for 572 square feet that means if you buy in the typical Toronto 550 square feet condo you'll get about 2300 on average if you buy one plus 10 is 660 now these are larger units all the units you get 380 a foot a lot of these one plus 10 units these days are in you know, the 400 400 you know 480 450 you, you get yourself a one plus 10 so the, the size is decreasing as the dollar per foot is increasing and that is done so the developers can keep selling you condos but in order for not to make them too expensive to make them smaller okay that's how it works and the average of two bedroom they're asking for 33 and that's asking doesn't mean they get that if you see what they get it's here so they get 2444 for 710 square feet so where, where would be the closest here the closest here would be 724 so it's around here that's a 700 square feet so 25 so you can see they're already asking for 700 square feet 2500 so for slightly larger the price will be higher so the price per foot asking is now already higher than what it's been receiving so far so there is a push on prices up the market is asking higher price no one's telling you this you'll see will tell you because i want you to see how i look at the market if you like how i look at the market call me and we'll buy and sell your condos together i am a real estate agent and that's what i do okay Average days on market, 37 average, 32 for the one bedroom, 29, 34, 37. Obviously, these are more expensive. Um, a bit of a more unique market, they'll stay longer. But you can cross-reference this with information here. Average uh, on MLS is 23 and 24 days. So somewhere in the between. But, you know, 30 days for to list your condo, if your price is right, that's more or less average. So, you know, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. So what have we learned so far? We learned that the prices that are posted what happened so far is less than where the market is going we are learning here we can clearly see that although the volume is lower and the volume is lower because the supply is lower the supply is almost 20 percent lower active listings okay so obviously there's less stuff on the market I, I just can't make those not enough transactions that pushes the prices up again why would it push the price up again because the less people are offering the units for sale and that means that everything that's available on the market will push price up. And of course, the price of new construction is up, up, up. So if you want to see the pre-construction, go to torontocondensforsale.com. And then there's this button here. Just hit it right away at the top. It's going to leave it there. And you can see everything in the system. Okay. Now, there are ways to make money in this market. And I'll show you a few ways to do it. Okay. So the one way, of course, is if you look, there is, there is a... If you buy resale, it's cheaper than the construction, but you got to close on it, pay the taxes, all that stuff. But you can see that in, we're entering into the dark period, but there's less units on the market, but also the prices are lesser, they're depressed. So if you're going to buy anything and you're going to buy anyway resale, you might as well do it. Give me a call. You might as well buy it between now and February. So let's go look for a resale place for you that you can buy to live or to rent out or to invest in. Uh, whether you want to live there, you want to renovate it, flip it, put tenants in, the mother, doesn't matter. Um, this is a good time to buy because although there's less selection, if you find something that you like, you're going to get a discount. Okay, So you can beat summer prices. But what happens is immediately after the new year, the price will jump up again and beat that price. So if you look here, it didn't take much in this year, in February, we already hit 730 seven and we never went back the lowest price we actually had in 2019 is coming out of the new year and it was a long cold uh, winter if you remember uh january 2019 703 and even 703 here is really that was your only chance to beat last year and then immediately went 2019 and we never really went below the highest price of 2018. oh no okay so 
prices are coming up, my friends. Um, I think that 15% um, will be challenged. It de really depending how you measure it. If you measure it by TREB, you know, uh, TREB has a one way of measuring. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. That's how they do it. And it's more of a, I guess, a conclusive way of measuring. Because they take everything in their system. Our condo.ca clearly have less units, nonetheless, even with, you know, they probably have thousands of units they're looking at here. Uh, because it can tell you here. That's what they're looking at right now. So, uh, but I'm, again, I'm not sure these units sold, when they sold, how this, is it the last month, is it the last year? Uh, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, it, it does show you. I mean, that's what they have. Maybe it's a monthly or, or rolling like last 15 days or 28 days. But nonetheless, I mean, look at this. This is very, very clear. It's a fantastic research tool, okay? Um, the other thing I can show you here is if you go to urbanrealtytoronto.com, you want to find some assignments because you will find great deals of assignments. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 dollars less per foot. Uh, just go here to the special searches, hit the assignment. Now that's not going to show you all the assignments. I'll show you whatever assignments are in the system. There are hundreds, hundreds more assignments available. If you want to know about those, just send me an email or call me, and I'll let you know. But right now, in this system alone, at the yossi.searchrealty.co. Uh, you can see there's about 60 assignments here, so it'll give you a good idea of what people are asking for, and I can make a search for you and let you know um, if they're selling and what are they selling for once they've sold and they're reported. Um, another thing you can do here is do a listing alert. And the listing alert is you can put your desired location, um, let's say King West, okay and it'll basically ask you to sign in and then it'll send you whatever assignments it finds in that area and you can change the radius here so that's really cool you can change the radius to really zoom in on king of bathurst i've made a video of how to use this one uh, let me show you where it is i made a video of how to use this one it's pretty easy to use and it'll just send you listings i'm not going to bother you it's just automated uh, but the whole thing, in just six minutes, you can run it, and it shows you exactly how to file, how to use this tool. It's a very, very good tool. It's automatic, and it's available to you, okay? So that was for today. No one tells you this. No one tells you part two. No one tells you about the market. Uh, no one tells you the differences between the price of resale and use sale. Um, I want you to understand how the market is moving in various directions. I want you to understand that... We will see a 15% increase, although it depends how you measure it. In some ways, you'll see it measuring um, a lot higher, especially when you look at pre-construction, you'll see 40 and 50%. Um, and if you measure it on a resale, you may see it slightly less. But you know, nonetheless, you can see this is unstoppable, okay? We just don't have enough condos. There's too much money floating around in the world, this is a global thing. So we need to make this happen. So if you in the market for selling, give me a call, I'll give you the best advice how to maximize this crazy market. If you in the market for buying, give me a call and I'll tell you how to use any advantage in the book, any trick, any possibility to make your investment better, stronger, smarter, higher ROI. Okay, this is Yossi Kaplan. Toronto Real Estate Agent Mortgage Broker with Search Realty and Search Mortgage. Call me when you want to buy, sell, invest in condos. Uh, you can be a lawyer, you can be a tax person, you can be an agent, you can be a buyer, you can be a seller. It's all good. I talk to everyone and anyone. Thank you very much. That's it.